Why are old people, poor people, and sick people being sued for $25,000 each by multimillionaires, big corporations, and Wall Street across the state of Michigan and elsewhere? Why are they doing this to us? Who are these millionaires and big corporations doing this? This time from a man who says he's being bullied by his landlord. The man from Gaines Township sold one of his two mobile homes to a friend. Now he says the park owners are suing him for thousands of dollars. But he says he didn't break any rules. The community of Southwood Village, located off 60th Street in Gaines Township. Today, the man had a court hearing on the matter, and Fox 17's Aaron Cunningham was there. Good evening. Bob Birkin Pass wanted to sell his mobile home. Sounds simple enough, but he was shocked to be slapped with a lawsuit for $25,000 by park managers. They are also suing the buyer for another $75,000, claiming damage to property values. Both sides were in court today, and the judge may not be buying it. Bob Birkin Pass says he's lived at Southwood Village Mobile Home Park in Gaines Township for nearly a decade. He has two properties, one of which he wanted to sell. He says he informed park management and they wanted to buy it. They gave me a price of $4,000. I called another gentleman to the, a friend of mine, uh, Rod, and he said, uh, um, I'll give you 6500 In early March, the best bidder got to buy the home. Birkenpass says he sold it to his friend Rod Romaine, who plans to move the home. But Birkenpass says the $6,500 deal upset the Sun Home Sales Park Manager. She called me up on the phone and she said, started screaming. She said, we will sue you. Um, you. There's no way you can win. We have deeper pockets than you do. And that's when the lawyers got involved. This document on the front door says it all. The mobile home park got an injunction against Birkin Pass and Romaine, the man he sold it to. It's a restraining order that stops the seller and buyer from moving the home off the lot. The company claims that Birkin Pass failed to give them right of first refusal, basically a chance to counter offer. A new policy we learned took effect January 1st. But Birkin Pass says he never signed anything, and he has a month to month lease that carried over from the previous management. We wanted to get park management's side of the story. I'm just here in regards to Bob Birkin Pass and Robert. No, no comment. The park manager wouldn't talk to us directly, but she did have to testify in court today in a room full of opposition. If there's no lease agreement that's, that's now month to month tenancy, how is there a lease agreement that this amends? Because as long as, in, as far as I have known, is when you change a rule in the mobile home in the state of Michigan, as long as you inform your tenant of the 30 day of a change of the rule. Her attorney argued that the right of first refusal is enforceable, despite Birkin Pass never agreeing to put it in writing. But the judge questioned that logic. I know they did. The client says this is the consideration. They drafted it. I agree. Mr. Birkenpass did not draft it. Your client drafted it. Right, I understand. Whether with or without your consent or acknowledgement, but it was. What's been happening in the state of Michigan, Your Honor, over the last several years is that people are coming into manufactured home communities and are offering to purchase homes from tenants who are unsophisticated for relatively low amounts of money, say, $6,500 for the purpose of this case. Apparently, your client thought this home was worth $4,000. Finally, we got through to him, and she says, well, now they're, they're going to offer you $3,500. I said, no, we had a deal for eleven. First on Fox, a mobile home tenant in Muskegon County finding herself at the center of a $25,000 lawsuit and taking her concerns to the Fox 17 problem solvers. She claims that she is being harassed by her corporate landlord when it comes to the right to first refusal. We were alerted to this case after doing a similar investigation last week. Tonight, problem solver Darren Cunningham takes a closer look at what's happening along the lakeshore and what you can learn from this woman's story. There are two sides to every story. On one side, the mobile home park tenant that just wants to sell their personal property. On the other side, park management, which says, you've got to give us right of first refusal, even though it's not in the lease, nor is there any other signed agreement. But what's been happening in the state of Michigan, Your Honor, over the last several years is that people are coming into manufactured home communities and are offering to purchase homes from 
tenants who are unsophisticated for relatively low amounts of money. Kathy Bonter's aunt, Barbara Bauer, is one of thousands of tenants attorney Matthew Miller may have been referring to during a hearing last week. Bauer lived in Muskegon's Nomad Mobile Home Park since 1999. My aunt was in a very bad accident, lost her leg. Um, she was in hospitals for a few years. And uh, we paid. We left the trailer there and we paid for th almost three years. Bauer is now in an assisted living facility, no longer able to live alone. So Bonters, who has power of attorney, tried to sell her home. We had someone interested for 15000 Bonter says Nomad Park Management foiled that deal and eventually wanted to buy the home themselves for $11,000 to make sure it stays on the property. But Bonters claims management dragged its feet for three months. Finally, we got through to him, and she says, well, now they're, they're going to offer you $3,500. I said, no, we had a deal for eleven. Unsatisfied with the lowball offer, Bonters says she was referred to Chris Bogner over at Timberline Mobile Home Sales. I came in and looked at the house, and I offered her $9,000 for the house, which I think is a fair market price for the home. Now park management is saying they violated the right of first refusal, a chance for the park to counter offer, which took effect in 2013, even though Bonters says her aunt never signed anything. I was served with paperwork and a $25,000 lawsuit that uh, prohibited me from pulling the home out until it was heard in circuit court. Bogner can't move what's now his home because of the restraining order. Miller, the same attorney that argued on behalf of Sun Communities, is now arguing for Nomad. If the court doesn't enforce the right of first refusal and the home is removed, then it under, not only does it undermine the whole rule that was put into effect and is appropriately in effect, and I can address all that if the court would like, but it also creates a situation where damages in this case will spiral out of control very quickly. The judge's next step is to decide whether or not to remove the temporary restraining order. If he does, Bogner says he will then move the property immediately. In Muskegon, Darren Cunningham, Fox 17 News. Tonight, a follow-up to a story the Fox 17 problem solvers first uncovered that's getting even bigger tonight. Well, there is closure for one family fighting their landlord in a right of first refusal controversy. More viewers are reaching out to our Darren Cunningham with their concerns of what they're calling intimidation litigation. Darren. That's right. The lawsuit against Robert Birkin Pass and Rod Romaine has been dismissed. These court documents I obtained spell it out. I also learned from one of the attorney's offices that all parties are barred from talking to media about the case because of a confidentiality agreement. Meantime, I caught up with another resident who says she's having similar problems with Sun Communities and now she doesn't know what to do. Fox 17 snapped this photo of an empty lot while visiting another resident at Southwood Village in Kent County's Gaines Township. That's where Bob Birkenpass mobile home used to sit until recently. He sold it to Rod Romaine, but it wasn't without a fight. She said, we will sue you. Um, you, there's no way you can win. We have deeper pockets than you do. The park, owned by Sun Communities out of Southfield, took both men to court, saying they violated a new policy and didn't give the park a chance to get the best bid. Now, court documents Fox 17 News obtained show that the case has been dismissed. The original owner beat a $25,000 lawsuit, and the buyer is now free to move the home. The case revolved around right of first refusal, a policy that took effect January 1st. And Fox 17 is finding out it's impacting mobile homeowners all across West Michigan as landlords try to keep their communities full. What's your take on it and, and what do you... I think it's a joke because we bought our house fair and square. We should be able to sell it if we want to move. We shouldn't be feel trapped. On Thursday, we met April Johnston. She reached out to Fox 17 after seeing our original problem solver story. Johnston first learned about the right of first refusal policy last November. She and her boyfriend, Corey, moved in three years ago, and they bought the home for $2,500. I started to try to sell my home last summer, and then they gave us that notice saying that we had to offer it to them first, and then we took our for sale sign down. Before taking the for sale sign down, she says she received an offer from an outside buyer for five grand. A good price, a good offer in her mind. And she says she gave the park a chance to match that offer. And what was the actual amount that they offered? Zero dollars. They told you it was worth nothing? They told us it was worth nothing. Okay. It said it was too old and it was worth nothing. That we, we needed to just give it to them for free. And now the couple is laying low, avoiding litigation for now. With someone offering five grand, 
why not just go ahead and, and sell it to them for five grand? Um, probably to avoid conflict, to avoid the whole suing and court issues and everything else. These multi-millionaire Wall Street guys who own the parks are telling us we have to sell them our home or they will sue us. It's obvious what they are doing. What if we need to sell our home right now to pay for a nursing home, move to a different state for work, or pay off our bank loan for our mobile home? Listen to that three-piece suit lawyer calling us unsophisticated. Who does he think he is? just because we are less well off than his multi-millionaire clients. You can help us put a stop to this. We can't do it alone. We need your help. Contact us today and we will show you how we can stand together and put an end to this unfair treatment of the people who can least afford to fight for what belongs to us. Please help us.